Hello, MCU fans. Today, we're going to take a look at an awesome comment left by a viewer on my video from yesterday. And if you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. But it, it does go to show why I read and respond to every single comment on the channel. It takes a ton of time, but you guys are awesome. It's like we're all sitting around a room trying to brainstorm the MCU together. I love it. So this comment was amazing because it raised the question I didn't even think was a question, which is who exactly did the Kang Council refer to as the exiled one in that post credit scene in Quantumania? And why is it so important? Oh man, this is really cool. So let's dive right in and see what we can find out. Okay, really quickly, I think you all know this, running a contest throughout the month of August, be a subscriber, leave a comment. You can win one of these three if you're the lucky winner. I'll announce it in September. Best of luck to everyone. All right, so in that post credit scene to Quantumania, what did the Kang Council tell us? And I'm gonna be honest, this post credit scene, while I thought it was really cool, really confused me too. But when you combine the Kate Heron article that I talked about in the previous video with this incredibly insightful comment from a viewer, oh man, it all makes sense. Okay, so what did they say? Well, they said, so the exiled one is dead. You sure he's dead? If it wasn't true, I wouldn't call you. Must really eat you up that you're not the one that killed him. None of us killed him. They did. They're beginning to touch the multiverse. And if we let them, they will take everything we've built. Okay, seems pretty simple, right? Pretty straightforward. In fact, here, let's, let's try to summarize this to figure out who is the Kang Council referring to when they talk about the exiled one. So there they are. What do they say? Four things. They say that he's the exiled one, duh. They know he's dead. That's important. They're aware he's dead. They wanted to kill him. At least some of them did. And his death means they, whoever they are, are beginning to touch the multiverse. Okay, so I'm going to be real honest. I just assumed it's got to be the Kang we saw in Quantumania, right? I mean, look at the first one. They call him the exiled one. Well, yeah, I, uh, duh. I mean, he called himself exiled, right? That was, that was just a given. So I was like, oh, surely that's who they're talking about. But honestly, even when I watched the movie, the rest of these didn't make much sense to me. First of all, how did they know he was dead, right? They shot him randomly into the quantum realm, unless they put some tracker on him, which is possible, or they're somehow viewing the vast multi, uh, 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 expansive quantum realm, which we've talked about. It is so expansive and so big. Maybe they're tracking him, I don't know. It, just, it, it was just surprising to me that they knew he was dead. More importantly, they wanted to kill him well, if they wanted to kill him, why did they exile him? Just kill him outright. You know, you might say, oh, they were lucky. They barely overpowered him and shot him into the quantum realm. I guess, but if they were able to overpower him, they probably should have just killed him right then. So that kind of confused me. But the biggest thing that confused me about them referring to the exiled one as, as the one in the quantum realm is how did his death mean people were beginning to touch the multiverse? Well, I started to try to make it work, right? You, you try to take the lines and figure out how could this work? Well, I mean, I guess they found a Kang and they killed him and they seem to vaguely be aware of the multiverse because Janet mentioned the multiverse because she, of course, touched his drive and learned about the multiverse. Okay, sure, I guess. But you could argue they really didn't touch the multiverse. They lucked out, ran into Kang in the quantum realm, the one they hated anyway, and, and they killed him. Oh, well. I just kind of was like, whatever, I don't, I don't understand this post credit scene, it'll all make sense later, I'll just move on, right? Well, then we get this comment from a viewer who said, uh, Lewis said, I think when the council refers to the exiled one at the end of Quantumania, they are actually referring to he who remains, who exiled himself, and are just now realizing that the sacred timeline that they do not have jurisdiction over is able to touch their multiverse because he who remains is dead. Whoa, whoa. Okay, uh, maybe some of you viewing this already thought all this. I'm just gonna say no one commented on any of my videos ever about this as a possibility. So it's the first I've seen this idea and I love it. I love it. Lewis, you're awesome, man. Okay, so let's look at his idea. Let, let, let's put now he who remains as potentially the one they're referring to. All right, so they call him the exiled one. Well. Lewis has a good point. He, he, they might view him as self-exiled. In fact, they might view that they exiled him, 
I mean, they didn't, but in their minds, they're like, oh, he's gone. Uh, he, he's the exiled one. I never would have thought of it that way, but after the Kate Heron article, after understanding that he isolated himself, okay, they might be referring to him as the exiled one. But the rest of this makes so much sense. They know he's dead. Oh, oh yeah, they totally know he's dead. The fact that he's dead is what now connected their multiverse to the sacred timeline, which had been isolated. Now they could see what's going on there. They see him dead at the end of the Citadel at the end of time. And they're like, oh, oh, wow. Did they want to kill him? You know, they probably did, if you think about it. Because remember, he who remains said, I weaponized Eliath. I won the multiversal war. I isolated the sacred timeline. So basically, he whooped their butts, right? He took Eliath away from them. He used Eliath to seal himself off and, and took Eliath with him, you know, into the sacred timeline. Yeah, they probably did want to kill him. They probably think he's an arrogant jerk. In fact, remember, in the end of Loki, as he who remains described all the ways people have referred to him, jerk was one of them. They probably all think he's a, a, a jerk. Okay, I'll buy that. But here's the one that makes so much sense. His death means that they are beginning to touch the multiverse. Oh, yes, they are. Think about that. I mean, now the they is not the ant family in um, Quantumania. The they is Sylvie and Loki, but by extension, all the Avengers, all the superheroes. They managed to kill a Kang, because I don't think, I honestly don't think they even know the Kang in the quantum realm was killed. That's just my opinion. But anyway, they managed to kill He Who Remains, but more importantly, they're now aware there's a greater multiverse. They are impacting that multiverse, and I'm going to bet that really scares the Dickens out of the Kang Council. They want to take action. They're saying they, the, the Avengers, are going to destroy everything we've built. So let's look at this diagram, again, that I talked about in the previous video. If you haven't watched that video, you got to go back and watch it. But remember, I drew the multiverse, the quantum realm, and we had the, the main Kang Council, the big three, he who remains, and of course, uh, the, the exiled Kang. So he's down there in the quantum realm. He who remains managed to isolate the timeline. So in my mind, he used a lieth to cut those branches off, which effectively isolated the Kang Council from He Who Remains and the Sacred Timeline, right? The Sacred Timeline is the three on top, which I think are the Spider-Man universes and the Venom universe, that's just me. And then the bottom one is the main 616. But here's the key, he isolated them and that's how he did it. He used a lieth to cut the branches and now they have no access. And that's the key. They don't know what's been going on in the Sacred Timeline. They can't see it, and that's got to drive them crazy, right? They're control freaks. They want to be conquerors, and they, they have no access. They don't know what's going on. So let's look again at whose death was more important. You got the death of Kang in the quantum realm. What happened after he died? Pretty much nothing. Now, I argue that I don't think he's dead. I think he's going to come back as a beyonder. So actually, it's, it's really, really important that he, that, that he died. But they don't know that yet. In their minds, that didn't cause anything to change. But how about when he who remains died? Was that important? Oh yeah, because now they were no longer separated. As Kate Heron said in her interview, the branches reformed. Now they have access to view the sacred timeline. They realize he who remains is dead and they see all these heroes in that universe. And they're probably like, holy crap, this is not good. I mean, think about it. They probably killed off all the Avengers in their universe. I mean, obviously the Kang that was exiled killed a ton of Avengers. They probably did too. They probably wiped out anybody that was a threat to them in their universes, in their multiverse, if you will. But the, the sacred timeline, which was cut off, which was isolated, allowed all these heroes to grow. And I think He Who Remains did it on purpose. It was kind of his security system that he knew, worse come to worse, if for some reason... Those, the Can Council found a way to access his little sacred timeline, he could fight him. He would have a way to fight him. Turned out he just got bored and wanted to be killed, which we saw at the end of Loki. But my point is, I don't think there's heroes in, in a lot of those other branches. There could be, but I'm, I'm betting there aren't. So yeah, wow, doesn't this make so much sense? I think they were referring to the exiled one as he who remains. And their fear now of they touching the multiverse is the Avengers, is ever, all the heroes. And that's why we're gonna see in the Kang Dynasty and probably in other places, these three Kangs taking action and proactively going to fight them. Wow, oh my goodness, that is really, really cool. Tell me what you think. 
Do you think the Kang Council was referring to he remains and not the exiled Kang? Do you think the Kang Council even cares about the exiled Kang and whether he died, the one in the quantum realm? Or are they far more interested in he who remains and his death and the sacred timeline and what a mess that's going to be for them now that it's a threat? Wild. Okay, I know I said it last time, but now we wait for Loki season two. And again, I'm even more excited. This is all coming together. It makes so much sense. So that Kate Heron article, as well as, again, excellent comments from viewers, really brings this all together. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Remember, there's a contest. Be a subscriber. Leave a comment. And then, as I always mention, we have a Discord server. I'll leave a pinned comment so you can join. We would love to have you out there making conversation. But even if you don't join, I love when you leave the comments on the videos because, you know, it makes everything work out better when we're all just throwing out ideas as a team. Awesome. Also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content, and we'll all continue to enjoy the ever-growing, ever-changing Marvel Cinematic Universe.